Hello everyone, I'm Zack and welcome back to another hit film tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this 3D space battle scene inspired by Star Wars. We'll be using 3D models in the Particle Simulator, which require add-on packs if you're in Express. You can find the project file for this effect in the video description if you'd like to follow along. You can't have an epic space battle without some spaceships. The 3D models I used are free from Sketchfab.com. You can find the download links in the video description. Make sure to download the GLTF versions, as that is the easiest format to bring into HitFilm. Let's start by importing the TIE Fighter model. It looks pretty good already but feel free to tweak the materials to make it look even better. Click the card on screen to learn more about 3D model materials. Create a new composite shot and drag in the model. Add a new point layer and make it 3D, then parent the model to the point. We will later animate this point to move the TIE Fighter. Add two more 3D points and position them on the TIE Fighter's laser cannons. Parent them to the TIE Fighter. These points will later be used for firing the lasers. I will zoom in the 3D camera as I prefer this look as opposed to the default wider angle lens. Next, we can import the Razorcrest model. It's already looking good, so there isn't much we have to tweak in the material settings. I don't want the glass to be transparent, so I'll enable Material Override. This will allow us to use a hit film layer for the texture, so we can get rid of the transparency which comes with the PNG image texture. Let's also enable Material Override for the thrusters, so we can change their color to orange later on. Click Import Maps to bring these image textures into HitFilm, allowing us to edit them. Then hit OK. The textures on this model are very high resolution, so I'd recommend reducing the maximum 3D model map size while working in the file. This model comes in with three different animation files. I'll apply the flying animation which puts the ship into a flying pose and animates the engines. Make sure to check loop so the animation continues. Add another new 3D point, this time parenting the Razorcrest model. The TIE Fighter is too big, so I'll scale it down to about 30%. The models don't look as good as they did in the import window. This is because we haven't added any lighting yet. We'll do this later on to keep the scene simple for now, making it quicker to work with while we animate. I'll be animating this shot, which was heavily inspired by a scene in The Mandalorian. Let's start with the Razor Crest. Enable keyframing for the point's position and rotation values, then move and rotate it into place. Jump ahead on the timeline, then move and rotate it again. I ended up creating this animation of the ship rocking from side to side. The rotation keyframes were offset from the position keyframes to make for a more interesting movement. I also made good use of the manual Bezier keyframe type. This creates a much smoother movement than the default linear keyframes. Don't just set every keyframe to be smooth though. The keyframes at the start and end of the shot were left as linear, making it seem like the motion would continue beyond the shot instead of slowing down at each end. Repeat this process to animate the TIE Fighter. Make sure to place it behind the Razor Crest in Z-Space. I animated the tie similar to the Razor Crest and added a couple spins. I also animated the Y rotation so it would point towards its target. 
Animation like this can take some time to get right. That's why it's extremely helpful to have reference material to learn from, such as the actual Star Wars movies and shows. This shot actually has no 3D camera movement. If you play it back, it looks pretty boring as the ships don't seem to be going anywhere. That's where the Starfield comes in. I created this Starfield in a new composite shot. Apply the atomic particles effect to a white plane layer. Then select the Starfield preset. You can then adjust the settings until you are happy with your stars. Typically, you would create a 3D star field by applying the 360 viewer effect, and it would react properly to a 3D camera moving and rotating around. However, an easy trick to fake the appearance of a camera move is to simply animate a 2D image of a star field. For this shot, I animated the position of the stars to move up and to the right over the whole shot. Make sure your star field is big enough either in resolution or by increasing the scale, so you have room to move it around. Now when we play this back, whoa! It looks like the ships are diving and the camera is following them. This 2D star technique essentially replicates what would have been done practically for the original Star Wars films. Back in 1976, they filmed the practical models against a blue screen. To make the models appear to move, they moved the camera with a motion control system. They then filmed a 2D star field as a separate element to be added in later. By moving and rotating the star field, they were able to give the illusion of more dynamic movement for the ships and cameras. You can experiment with all kinds of different animations. Here's a simple flyby shot with no star movement. Here it is again with the stars moving on an angle. Here's what it looks like when you rotate the stars. And here's what it looks like when you move the stars up and down. Crazy! It totally changes the perceived motion of the scene, but our spaceship animation and camera haven't been changed. Now that our spaceships are flying, it's time to make them look more realistic. I'll start by enabling ambient occlusion on the models to bring out some more detail. Add a new light layer, setting the type to directional. Directional lights best represent a distant light source, such as the sun. Adjust the position to angle the light in a way that creates nice highlights on the models. Enable shadow casting on the light and model layers, and adjust the shadow settings if needed. Our Razor Crest still isn't looking that great. This is because the reflective metal material needs something to reflect. I'll bring in an HDRI from HDRIHaven.com. Hide it from view, and select it as the model's environment map. There! We now have some nice reflections on the model. This doesn't really make any sense since we are in outer space, but it looks a lot better. I chose the Studio HDRI as it didn't have any vibrant colors, and it kind of mimics the look of filming a practical model in a studio, like the original Star Wars films. Make sure to be in 16-bit color mode to take full advantage of the HDRI. I'll stay in 8-bit for now for better performance. The Razor Crest glass is still transparent. Let's make each of the Razor Crest textures into their own composite shots. In the glass comp, I'll add a new black plane layer underneath the image layer, so you can no longer see through it. In the thruster comp, desaturate the image, then make it orange. I did this with the color vibrance effect, but you could use almost any color correction effect. 
Bring these texture comps into the main comp and hide them. Then select each layer in the model's override materials controls. Choose the thruster texture for both diffuse and emission. A Star Wars space battle isn't complete without some lasers. There are various ways to create laser blasts in HitFilm. A more manual approach would be to use one of the light sword effects or the animated lasers effect. I prefer something that's a little more automated, so I'll be using the particle simulator. Open up the emitter settings and attach it to one of the TIE Fighter laser points. Set the trajectory to cone and set the radius to zero. Then adjust the rotation to make the particles fire in the right direction. Reduce the particles per second, then increase the speed. To make the particles look like laser blasts, I created a simple 3D model in Blender to use as the particle texture. The laser model is included in the downloadable project file. Import the 3D model and make the diffuse color white. Drag it onto the timeline and select it as the texture source layer of the particle system. Check Align to Motion, then adjust the laser model's rotation to reorient the particles. Now the lasers will point in the direction they are traveling. Set the particle system velocity from emitter to 100%. This way the laser speed is affected by the TIE Fighter speed. If this value wasn't changed and the ship was flying forward very fast, the lasers would fall behind the ship. When the laser blasts are created, they overlap the TIE Fighter. To fix this, adjust the anchor point on the laser model so it is at the end of the laser. You can also adjust the scale of the model to change the laser's shape. I'll set the Particle Sim's depth source layer to be the Razor Crest, so the lasers will intersect with the model instead of sitting on top. If you want to stop the lasers from firing, animate the active property on the particle emitters. In this case, I deactivated the particles when they weren't firing anywhere close to their target. And when they actually hit their target. When you are happy with this laser, duplicate the particle emitter and attach it to the other laser point. Next, we need to add some glow to these lasers. You can do this by stacking a few glow effects, each with a different radius, and with the per channel intensity adjusted to be the desired color. To add some interaction between the lasers and the models, add a new light layer with the color set to match your laser blasts. Parent the light to the TIE Fighter and zero out its position and place it just in front of the fighter. Adjust the light's fall off and reach, so it only lights up the area close to the laser. When a laser appears, animate the light's intensity to increase, and animate its position to move out from the TIE Fighter. Then animate the intensity to fade out. You can then copy and paste these keyframes for each laser blast.
This moving light adds a lot of realism and interest to the shot. To finish off the shot, we can add some lens effects to add more detail and make it look even cooler. First of all, make sure to enable motion blur for all of the moving layers. Set the color bit depth back to 16 bit float. I'll do a basic color grade using curves and bleach bypass to adjust the color and contrast. If your spaceship's engines or thrusters are visible in the shot, you can enhance their bright appearance with some glow effects. Click the card on screen to learn how to do this. Next I'd recommend using the anamorphic lens flare effect. Make the streak horizontal and disable the pivot options. Adjust the threshold, intensity, and offset until you have some nice flares on the bright spots of your shot. Another useful lighting effect is the lens dirt effect. When using lens dirt, be sure to use an image texture for the dirt instead of the built-in dirt texture. You can find the image I used in the downloadable project file. Finish off the shot with some film grain, then a letterbox effect to create the wired aspect ratio. And that's how you can create your own Star Wars style space battle in HintFilm. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or if you learned something new. There are many other Star Wars and 3D model tutorials on this channel, so be sure to check those out as well. Subscribe for more tutorials like this and be sure to give this video a like. See you next time!